So when he said, I have not been with any women and done nothing inappropriate, it is all a lie, he was committed. And you better believe there's going to be more and more women that come out. More and more women from all those little special, you know, corporate events at hotels. And that's what Fortune 500 is like. They're constantly in hotels, and it's just a place for the different branches of the companies to all have sex with each other. That's what goes on in America. And, uh, you know, maybe Herman Cain's in trouble because he didn't, it wasn't little kids or something. If it been little kids, the media probably would have covered it up like ESPN. But that's, he's bad because he's a Federal Reserve former head of probably the second or third most powerful. It goes New York, Kansas City, or Dallas. You can argue which one's most powerful after the New York Fed. He's a globalist. He doesn't tell you it's 9999 with the payroll tax and that they can jack up all those nines or that it's always been the bankster plan that I've been telling you about for 16 years to push a fair tax and at the end of the day still keep the income tax at 9%. And have the federal government involved in sales taxes and excise? Can you imagine a VAT? All right, I'm going to shut up and go back to Paul Watson. Uh, again, start from the beginning, recap this uh, Paul, you, you're going to have the floor here, and then our uh, part of an interview with an amazing 45, almost 50 minute interview uh, with the head of Oath Keepers last night, uh, Stuart Rhodes, where he started talking about Ron Paul when he first met him in '98. Came in for the interview. He's at the top of his class at Yale. Wrote an award winning document on military internment, and uh, uh, Stuart Rhodes started, you know, got a little teary eyed. So did I. He's talking about Ron Paul behind the scenes. You know, basically being uh, ground down and, you know, we've got to save the republic and being the same guy behind the scenes he is in public. Uh, but just an amazing interview. The whole thing's at PrisonPlanet.tv. But going back, there's two articles to be clear. Chinese government official, U.S. threat to Pakistan is threat to China. And the other one, Chinese government official, got that double printed. And the second article, Chinese general threatens world war to protect Iran. Or Pakistan, they're also saying that. So that, those articles are linked in red at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. This is exclusive. This article is the first one translated into English. We have links to it. It's by Paul Joseph Watson and Ehan. Now, Paul Watson, you've got the floor. Break it down. Well, the first article was a Chinese general, and he's, he's called Zhang Zhao Zhong. And he's, um, he's a well-respected, well-known naval general he's he's in the military and he's also an analyst for tv he's received numerous awards and you can go and watch the video there's a there's a subtitles on it in english and he says quote china will not hesitate to protect iran even with a third world war so that came out this morning and as i noted in that article china's talking about iran we've just had the latest naval update map which shows you where the aircraft carriers are going. And the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier, which is the same one that Bin Laden's body was supposedly aboard, has just deployed from the United States, and it's going to join the U.S. Fifth Fleet. It's going to join the um, Stennis immediately outside the territorial waters of Iran. So two massive warships, not just two, actually, NBC reports that it's going to be accompanied by a guided missile cruiser, the USS Bunker Hill, and a guided missile destroyer, the USS Halsey. So you've got three U.S. warships heading for Iranian territorial waters. So that was the first report about Iran. And the second report was from a, um, a Chinese new news website called Zhong Shijia, and that cited a report by China's Central Television where this unnamed government official said, quote, any threat to Pakistan is a threat to China. And he said that in response to the fact that U.S. troops, of course, already in Afghanistan, are massing on the border of Pakistan. China sees that as an act of aggression because it's obviously got a very close alliance with Pakistan. In fact, in China, they describe it as a, quote, brotherhood. And in a quote from this article is, Quote, China will never be in peace if Pakistan is lost. So they obviously think that the United States is about to attack Pakistan. They've got troops massing on the border. They've just had a massive joint military exercise with Pakistan, which included the latest, most sophisticated Chinese tactical missiles. That took place on the border of Pakistan. 
And now they're saying, of course, in the aftermath of the NATO bombing, which killed the Pakistan soldiers, if America attacks Pakistan, then they're going to be ready because they're all already having war games based around that premise. So we've got a major escalation in hostilities. Obviously, we've got the Syria situation ongoing, which, of course, China and Russia have said they don't want they're not going to support a UN mandate for a humanitarian intervention. You've got Russian warships now in Syrian territorial waters. You've got the Russians giving Syria um, anti-aircraft uh, missile technology. So I've never seen the rhetoric so heated um, as it has been for the past few weeks. Syria, Iran, Pakistan, it's all coming to a head. And notice now, Paul, all of this is happening just as we said it would. And Salenti and countless others, Paul Craig Roberts, get standard during a big globalist move to go ahead and implode the economy and then launch a war on top of that. And they've already launched proxy al-Qaeda forces all over the world. They're running their proxy armies right up to the borders of China, right up to the borders of Russia. They know they're already getting ready to have proxy groups in those breakaway uh, 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 republics and other demilitarized zones like South Ossetia and Abkhazia. I mean, this is really the banksters going for the world while they suck America dry and destroy our name uh, in the process of having us do their dirty work. I mean, it's really happening. And, and, and what's scary is the globalists are insane. I mean, they're masterminds. They've carried this out. They've had the will to do it. They've had the foresight. But at the same time, you catch them making 20 to 1, 40 to 1, 100 to 1 bets at MF Global and, and uh, at other big firms like Goldman Sachs. I mean, it, these really are people who think they're invincible or in their own words, even if they aren't invincible, they're still going to try it. And they've got our military under their control and they're so brazen. Same thing in England. They're coming out saying there as well. We'll arrest citizens and disappear you whenever we want. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. We'll torture. I mean, it's all the same propaganda. They are just putting forward a face of pure authoritarianism worldwide. I'm not saying China or Russia are good either. The point is they're not the ones just totally taking over. And then you find out the very same elite that are doing this are heavily invested in China and are playing some weird double game. And maybe they do want to destroy the U.S. Maybe, maybe we're not meant to come out of this, you see. This is very sophisticated, Paul. What do you think's going on here? Well, there's undoubt. I mean, in China, there's this worship of anyone in a position of authority. And if you think it's bad in America, then it's even worse in China. Um, so a lot of the Chinese elite think they're in bed with the Anglo-American elite. So they think they're all on the same team. But obviously, people in certain positions of power have got different ideas. And I, I presume that a lot of those people are in the Chinese military. Um, but there's also an addendum, which is the fight we, was, we were talking about Iran. China's ambassador actually went to the UN, um, and not to the UN, to the IAEA. This is China's ambassador to the UN, who is a Japanese fellow called Yukio Amano. He's at the IAEA. And the Chinese ambassador basically said, look, don't produce any fake evidence to justify an attack on Iran because we're going to out it. He said, don't produce any unfounded evidence on Iran because we're going to oppose it. So they're even aware of the fact that they could be waiting to stage some fake evidence to go in there regarding well, their new Well, let's not forget that almost five years ago, Ray McGovern said that he thought they'd probably stage a new Gulf of Tonkin in the Persian Gulf to attack Iran. And then we learned that a few months later that very thing happened, and we didn't learn for over a year and a half that it had in New Yorker magazine, Cy Hirsch, that they were already painting up patrol boats to have Navy SEALs drive up and stage an attack on one of our ships. And then we learned they even tried it with a radio and some blue boats, probably actually implemented it, but the blue boats turned away. I mean, we're dealing with very dangerous people, very, very dangerous people uh, who could do anything. And the very same people that ran Bush and Cheney are running Obama right now. Well, um, Obama just reads the teleprompter. <laughs> if you read the background into Obama, you know that he's just an empty vassal. He didn't even write his own book. But, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it may, the, the level of evil makes China and Russia look like the good guys. I mean, that's how bad it's got. We have to go to Russian and Chinese state media at least to get, you know, half the story because the U.S. corporate media barely gives you 1%. So 
So that's that's the level that it's got to. And now, I mean, the, the Federal Reserve comes in and comes to the rescue and saves Europe. What did they do? They, the CNBC admits they just went in. They didn't print the money. They typed it into a screen using a keyboard and gave dollars to Europe. They bled the, the dollar to keep the euro on life support for another 10 days. And it's just, yeah, Ben Bernanke to the rescue once again. So it's just the level of evil and the level of denial of it is what's going to sink America. And, I mean, it's already turning in, into a, a post-Soviet Union-style collapse with a record number of people on food stamps, the employment and everything. So when people say that this is the era of, of China and, and the East and the brick developing economies like Brazil and um, China and others, then we can see it unfolding right in front of us with the very actions of the Federal Reserve yesterday. That's right. The globalists have used America, bankrupted America, never upgraded into the infrastructure, stole everything, and now we're just this husk of military power that's winding down and rotting, and the power is now transferring, and I guess in the final move, America takes over some more real estate for the globalists who have all moved to China. I mean, all of them. They, uh, Maury Strong, t t Ted Turner, uh, the Rockefellers have all got houses over there. Uh, all of them. They're all over there. It's all real funny. And they've just totally destroyed our country. And the average good old boy is just beating his chest saying, murder, murder, murder brown people. Take all my rights, just murder some brown people. Parking lot, parking lot. Unbelievable escalation towards thermonuclear war. We hope it's averted. Thank you so much, Paul Watson. We'll be right back. Hey, my friends, I'm going to continue with the news. Uh, in the second segment, I will uh, air the 10-minute uh, excerpt of the incredible interview I did with Stuart Rhodes last night. And he stated it correctly. Uh, he basically said that the National Defense Authorization Act is a declaration of war against the American people. By NORTHCOM, by the captured U.S. military forces by the, the mega banks that control them. The military industrial complex has slowly been investing in the prisons and the surveillance and the militarization of police and the training and the RAND Corporation and the drones and the checkpoints and, and military checkpoints and just getting everybody ready. And now it's, we're going to be all over the streets. The TSA is going to run checkpoints and we're going to search your vehicle. We're going to grab your family and we're going to run you through a database. And if you're not who we... Uh, You'll think it's a good little minion, you're going to go in the back of the army truck. I mean, it is what the Pentagon calls an internal defense. An internal defense. And that's when they go in and occupy a country and then try to resist the people trying to throw them out. And then this is a occupation. This is a banker occupation. Look at Europe. They don't debate it. They come out and they say, Goldman Sachs has conquered Europe. I've probably seen that headline 30 times in major publications, Financial Times, BBC, Time Magazine, Forbes. Just, oh, Goldman Sachs took over. The Economist is like, wow, well, they are experts. It's hard to have a rule by experts. It's the new system. Yeah, European countries will have no sovereignty. And there'll be a new IMF, World Bank, OECD. Uh, Takeover, but they know 